Hello and welcome to Flower Juice. My name's John McDonald, and today we're going to show you how to make the hand tied bokeh. Now this is something that uh, a lot of people have been asking us about and wanting us to revisit and we wanted to revisit it as well. So if you want to keep up to date with all our videos then click subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications because we're going to have a lot of videos coming up. So the hand tie is a really popular floral design that's been going for a wee while now and once you've grab the basic technique, then essentially you can make small, big, medium, you can make it into bridal work. It really is something that is really valuable to know how to do. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at a basic hand tie, and then maybe look at just how do you take it up a level and make it a little bit more interesting. So the ingredients I've got here is I've got some roses, and this is a Miss Piggy rose. We've got a white oriental lily. I have got some chrysanth blooms. We've also got some spray chrysanth stems. I've got some carnations, uh, thistle or eryngium or sea holly as you might know it. Uh, greenery wise, we've got a little bit of eucalyptus, some salal, we've got some leather leaf, some pittosporum, and I've also got a little bit of astrantia. So the things like our pittosporum, our astrantia, our thistle and our leather, um, eucalyptus, we're gonna keep for the upscale version. But for our basic one, what you want to think about is essentially you're going to make a round bokeh. So the best way to bring balance into that bokeh is to maybe think in placements of two or four or three. So I've gone with three because I think that gives you good balance. So we've got our three chrysanthemums, three carnations, three blooms. But to centre that in the middle, we've got one lily. So the lily in this bokeh is probably the most expensive flower. So having that in the middle is a good option. Having one rose in the middle works well as well. Um, what you might want to do is have a large rose and then you could use smaller roses. So that, that's a possibility as well. The lily, I think, does work quite well. The good thing about a lily in comparison to, say, the roses for the customer is if these start to go, then this is starting to bloom. So they're getting something that is, is going to last. So what I would do initially is I would lay out my materials. So you want to make sure that any leaves or extra stems or anything that's in the way is cleaned off below uh, the level that you're going to tie it at and with our foliage again what we can do is we can look at it split it down into like units so that's that's like a good piece because it's one unit that I can I can use together that works okay this one's a little bit of a silly shape so I think what we'll do is we'll just cut that and get two pieces so with our leather leaf as well what I like to do is give it a bit of a spray so they're a bit dull and a bit uninteresting at the moment, but they're good basic structure. But just giving it a wee spray with some leaf shine, that really kind of livens it up and makes it more interesting. So to start then, what you really want to do is you're wanting to use, depends if you're left-handed or right, and you will find that you have a natural inclination to make a hand tie in a certain way. But essentially you're gonna use one hand loosely held as a vase and you're gonna use your other hand to put the flowers in. So if we're thinking about, there's different ways you can approach this. You could make a base of just greenery. So we could take our salal. Now I'm looking at that's facing that way, that's facing that way, put them back to back, and I'm getting a nice structure here. So I'm really creating a structure. And what I'm doing is just building up the foliage to create a base for us adding our flowers. So this is one way that you can do it. And then really what you're gonna do with that is you can then start to work your flowers in. So that's one approach. Another approach is you really just start with the flower and you work your way around. So as you go, you add, so we can start with our flower, we can add a little bit of foliage. So we can maybe put in a couple of the leather leaf then what we can do is bring in, say, the chrysanthemums, and we're bringing them in to create this structure. And then really what we can do is we can look at adding in into those other areas, the other elements of our flowers. So that's another way that we can do it as well. There's no right or wrong. Um, you'll find that some things work better than others. And there'll be times where you maybe make a bokeh where it is just flowers, so like for a wedding bokeh. But essentially what you're doing with your flowers is you, if you're holding one straight up, 
you're coming in from behind and putting it that way and you're coming in from the front and putting it that way. So left to right and right to left. Essentially, if you were to take a stack of pencils and put a rubber band around them and then put a twist on it, that's the spiral that you want to get in the middle of your bokeh. So once we put one together, you're gonna to see how this works. So I'm just gonna make this as if I was making it for an order. So I'm gonna start with my lily and I'm gonna go with the foliage first. I think if you are first approaching this, it's easier to approach it in this way. I think if you make the foliage base and then have to feed the flowers through, that's maybe a little bit more difficult if you're not used to this. So the lily is really the star of the show. So it's in the middle. The roses are also the kind of second most important flower, so we want them quite close to the center. Now I'm gonna, so this is feeling quite secure and I hope you can see this, but this is where we have the spiral. So this spiral is really the thing that holds the bokeh. So I'm just coming in again with more foliage to create yet another layer of support. So we're really kind of framing that. And then I'm coming in here and I'm thinking, right, I want my flower to be there. So again, I'm going right to left at the back. And if I want this one at the front, I can go left to right. You just need to get yourself some materials and really have a good session with this. If you've never done hand ties before, get some basic materials with good straight stems and just start to work with them. If you make one and it's beautiful, well, fantastic, but take it to bits, make it again. Take it to bits and make it again. Try different things, try holding it in different ways. Now, I'm holding this here and there is a certain weight in these flowers. I can balance it on that stem, so that's one way. If I find that this is very tiring, I can lie this flat with my hand while I'm thinking about the next thing. But this is where it's important to have all your materials already prepared and ready. You don't want to be having half a bokeh in your hand and then you need to take the thorns off the roses because you'll just get tired. So. If you're holding this too tight, you're gonna put stress in your arm, you're gonna find that you get tired very quickly. So I'm really holding this very, very light. But that also gives me the flexibility that I can move those stems within that bokeh. So if I want, I can bring that lily out or I can put that lily further in. And it's because this is not tight. So essentially, we've added in those carnations and the final flowers and I would just go around with a few more pieces of foliage. I quite like foliage because I think it makes the, the bokeh look more natural uh, and it just looks more finished. So if I go around with that, that essentially is a basic hand tie. So what we've got is we've got everything basically spaced out across the whole bokeh. Uh, you can see all the flowers, everything's working well. <coughs> and. Um, it's nicely finished. So if I was gonna tie that off, I just take, take some, this is really just garden twine, and I'm gonna put that under here, just go around a couple of times. Now this is where I will use the bench, and I can just tie that off. The good thing with this garden twine is essentially, <coughs> it's flat, so it's not, something that's gonna cut into the flowers. So can you see, <coughs> this, is, um, this is the spiral. So everything below this tying point should be nice and clean. Uh, everything should be nice and neat. And because this is not crisscrossing, we can basically tie this very well. Right, so let's look at this again. So I'm gonna untie this and we can basically remake it. But, that was the basic one. Let's look at how we can make this a little bit fuller and a little bit more sophisticated. So it's one thing having three of this and three of that. that. That works, it depends what value you've got to work with. But maybe we want to make a bokeh that looks more expensive or more special. So how do you do that? Well, I would keep the same basic core ingredients 
and then I would add more materials or add some different materials. But we'll just take this down to start and we can look at this. So what I've got is I've got my lily <laughs> and uh, I'm going to use the syringium. So this is a, a sea holly or thistle. This has got a great structure. So we can use that really to create a little bit of support straight away without having any foliage. Now you could break this down. I could, I could look at taking that one off, which is possible, but that's giving me some support. So I'm looking at my lily and I'm putting that back to back. Uh, the only thing is you don't really want that one to go off center. So we can put the lily into that. And then we can start to add a little bit of foliage. So just exactly as we did earlier. Uh, but now we can add a little bit more interest as well. So we can add a little bit of this eucalyptus and we can add a little bit of the pittosporum. Now with our flowers, we've got some main strong flowers, but what you might find is that to make something look more special or high end, you can start adding some filler flowers, something that are a little bit, uh, a little bit thinner stem, a little bit more special maybe. So th even things like freesia, and we can pop them in. So again, we want them maybe to be central or maybe to be to the edge, but they will create more interest into the bouquet. So we're going to add our roses because that's quite important. And then I'm going to add my blooms because I think the blooms are more special than the spray chrysanthes. A little bit of the foliage. So the foliage is adding volume and support. Then we'll add our carnations. And then <coughs> we can add our spray croissants again. So we've created a little bit more interest with these Astrantia and with the thistles. I still have this thistle, so I can have a look over here and add this here. Now we still have a little bit of the eucalyptus. You can add this onto the outside. So straight away we've gone from what was a basic hand tie into something that is starting to look a little bit more special. Um, and we're showcasing some different materials and some different products. So for customers who get flowers regularly, then that's what they're gonna to wanna to see is something a little bit more sophisticated. If people are at a base value, then obviously the core bokeh is the thing that's important. But again, what we've got here is we've got the lily in the center, our three roses. Now I'm looking at this and I now see that this rose is really in the wrong place. So I can take this out and I can move that over to here. So I want the head to be here I just follow the principle that we've got in this spiral. So as long as it comes in from left to right at the front or from right to left at the back, as long as we keep that consistent, we can move things around. So I can look at this now and think, well, I really want the thistle to go deeper. I can do that. I can bring the lily out. That's fine. So that's our slight step up on the, on the hand tie. And this really is the skill that you need to learn is this spiral. If you keep the stems clean, you keep it really neat, when you tie that, that's gonna be secure. And then really, once you've got that, you can make anything you want. So you can make a compact bokeh, you can make a big open bokeh, and you can really start to have fun with your flowers. Like you can start to uh, you know, bring some out, change the shape of the bokeh, so you don't need to have a round bokeh. You can start to create something that's much more interesting uh, and dynamic. So all I would do now is I would tie this off and then we can look at wrapping it. Now we've already got one of our videos which shows you how to wrap. So if you have a look through our past videos you can see. What we will do is we will do a few of these videos uh, and this product in different ways over the next few weeks and months. What we want to do is we want to look at 
you know, the kind of different effects that you can get. So today we was really talking about a basic one and we can basically look at ones that are a bit more special. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and uh, thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date, as I said, with all our videos, then click here to subscribe and uh, tap that bell.